I'm M, M Magenta, and I'm here in the, a bit of a forest up in the Northwest Highlands um, on the edge of the sea near Ullapool. And it's a conifer plantation, about 50 plus years old, but with a matrix of not only rhododendron, but uh, a lot of the natives, birch, rowan, oak, hazel, alder, ash, um, which have grown up with the conifers. Today we're going to go and see if we can find hedgehog mushrooms. Hedgehog fungi you find in mixed, mixed conifer woodland is, is where, where I've found them. Um, in the later part of the summer, September and October, um, kind of depending on wetness and coldness, uh, same time as the brambles. It's a great mushroom to go foraging for because it can't be, can't be mixed up with any other toxic, poisonous mushroom. Because it's the only fungus that has spines underneath instead of gills. So it's very distinctive. That's why it's called the hedgehog mushroom. It's my favorite mushroom. It's got a really, really nice texture. A little, little just clump of two, two hedgehog mushrooms growing here. Just they're right, they're actually buried right underneath the moss here. So if I get my finger right underneath here, I can get get the pair of them without breaking too much. Whoops, <laughs> a mess there. So it's a lovely. Nice, distinctive shape. It's the same family as the um, chanterelles. So it's got that sort of indented um, cup here. It's not a domed shape, it goes down. And these lovely spines underneath. It's very lovely. It's got a mm, sort of chanterelle. It's sweet, sweet, really pleasant smell. Mm, can't wait to cook that. It's, they're growing right in here because, because it's been so dry, ironically, given how wet it's been this summer. Um, they're just actually totally, totally in, in the moist here. Normally they're really on the surface all the way through this bit of wood, but because it's a conifer plantation, um, these spruce have got really shallow roots and they suck up any, any moisture that there is. So the mushrooms are having to compete quite, quite vigorously for the, for the wet. It's raining pine needles. Oh, here's a nice one. Again, buried, tucked away, right under the ground here. Again, these distinctive spines, just beautiful, very attractive mushroom. There's a, a little family of them, one right under here as well, growing along the edge of the burn. These specimens here are connected with that one under there, and there's another one tucked under here, and there's another one up here. And they seem to be emerging here now in just very, very damp places, like right on the edge of the water here. These are connected with those other fungi that I picked earlier on, which were over the bank there, and all connected by this 
underground mycelial network. It's a kind of root system through which water, nutrients and information are exchanged. And these parts of the mushroom, they're the fruiting body. They're the, the fraction of this whole mushroom plant that appears above the ground. And it's massive, massive. It's much bigger than what you see above the ground. that one there that's a little that's a little emerging plant there you don't want to take everything that there is there you want to allow some to fruit and spore um, you leave in fact more than you pick because uh, otherwise you'll just wipe them out so I've got some wee chanterelles here same family or connected with the the hiddenums, the hedgehogs, but you see they've got the gills underneath, but they've got this, this same lovely wavy edge to them. Very pretty. I've spent most of my life picking here and there. I just do it instinctively. I think it's just, I do it as I, as I walk along, sort of my hand reaches out. I, I'm not even aware I'm doing it. So we're, we've brought the mushrooms along to the outside kitchen in the forest at uh, my place, which is a, it's a kitchen that can cater for quite a number of people. Um, so I've just chopped the hedgehog mushrooms and the chanterelle just into small pieces. And we're using some shallot today and the shallot is chopped up quite finely. So it's all ready to cook. And I'm just going to throw it all in together. Push, push all the shallots in. Keep them always around. And then put all the hedgehogs. The hedgehogs you can brush off on the more mature, on the bigger specimens, which we didn't really get any big specimens today, you can brush off the spines because they tend to, to come off in the cooking. But oh, I, it doesn't matter really to me. It's all tasty and it all goes in. That's lovely, lovely colours there. And I'll just coat this all in the, the oil. All those flavours start mingling. The hedgehog can be a bit bitter if you, if, if you eat it raw, just a little bit bitter, but that all disappears with the cooking. Let that fry away for, so sauté really, for about 10, 15 minutes. in a bit. I'm going to warm the whiskey separately, pour it on and ignite it. So we'll have flaming hedgehogs, flaming highland hedgehogs. Whoosh. Using the whiskey it gives it a, just a, a highland flavour, which is appropriate to the setting here. I'm just going to have it try it out with a bit of brown bread. So, thanks to the forest for this dish. It is a delicious free food. 
picked with with a lot of grace. Mmm. That's lovely. That's a whole range of flavours just immediately, immediately hit the palate. So I'll try these these mushrooms now. Four. Mmm. They've got very good texture. Even without the whiskey in it, I think it would be really nice. <laughs>